Welcome back for another week of Teen Kids. So we are in the last Wednesday of April. How crazy is that? Time is flying by so quickly. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're staying safe um, and hope you're um, getting all your schoolwork done. Time for prayer and praise. We want you to take just a couple of seconds and share whatever's on your heart. Maybe it's a friend or a family member that you talked to lately and you miss them. Maybe it's some friends at school that you're missing. Um, but take just a couple of seconds and share whatever God has laid on your heart. Okay, so today we want to, since we are at the end of April, we want to take some time and just pray for your classmates and your school friends. Um, because normally this time of year would start into all the fun stuff. State testing would be over and you would be getting to do field day, um, different award ceremonies. And all of those things are just going to be done differently this year. And But you've been able to hopefully have um, FaceTime or Zoom or Google Hangouts with your teachers and your friends some from your class that you've been able to communicate with them virtually. You've been working on your packets, whatever you've been trying to do. But let's just take time to pray for our friends at school and our teachers because this truly is a time that we all love at the end of the year. And I know me being in the school, I love the month of May. And it's really hard that we don't get to do all the fun stuff and the field trips and be together and to see all the growth and celebrate all the academic growth that you've had all school year. So this year we have to celebrate differently. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time that we get to come together, Lord, um, to study your word and learn more about you. But right now, our hearts are burdened for our school and for our friends, um, for our teachers, for the people that we miss, the activities that we miss. And Lord, we know that you have a plan in all of this and that you are teaching us so much. But God, just know that our hearts are a little bit broken, but we know that there's a bigger plan out there. So we're going to make the best of it. Lord, we love you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, so it's time for our video. Um, so I have a question for you. Do you know the story of King Josiah? I bet most of you probably don't. So let's watch the video and then we'll get back together to answer some questions. God's masterpiece, Josiah. This is Josiah. Josiah became king of Israel when he was only eight years old. Yep. Now the country of Israel had a very long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God, and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. 18 years after Josiah became king, he sent one of his court secretary, Shaphan, to God's temple. Thank you. Many of the kings before Josiah did not take good care of God's house, so it was in need of repair. Hmm. Oh. While they're in the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, Hey! I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. So Shaphan took the scroll back to King Josiah and read it to him. <laughs> when Josiah heard what was in the book, he was greatly upset. Oh, no! Because the people of Israel were not doing the things that God asked him to do, and Josiah knew that God must be angry with Israel for not obeying his commandments. Josiah gathered together all the people of Israel to the temple and read the entire book of the covenant to them. That very day, Josiah and all the people promised that they would obey all of what God commanded with all their hearts and souls. We promise you! Josiah went on to help Israel become a people fully committed to God. He tore down all the other temples and the idols that they had set up. He got rid of all the people who were doing bad things all throughout Israel. And he did all that was commanded in God's book. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who
Okay, guys. So how cool. King Josiah became king when he was eight years old. Can you imagine being king at your age? I know I can't. He also reigned for over 30 years, which is an extremely long time. And he left a lasting impression on the religious traditions of Israel. So here are some other things that we learned from the video. The Bible is God's word. It can be trusted, and when it is read and studied, it will guide you through your life. It will help us to make the right choices and know right from wrong. And God's word is meant to be a roadmap through this crazy thing we call life. Okay, so we have a couple of at-home challenges that you can do this week with your family. The first one's going to be putting a puzzle together. So put a puzzle together and just remember while you're doing that, that even though it's made up of different pieces, that when it's all together, it makes one beautiful picture. So the same goes for the Bible. It was written by different people with different backgrounds and different stories, but when it all comes together, it makes one beautiful story. The second is going to be a game of hide and seek. So everybody pick a spot, and if you have an older brother and sister, have them hide in a little bit harder spots so they're not so easy to find. Also hide a Bible. So take a family Bible, hide it somewhere in the house, and let the rest of your family um, play a game of hot and cold and try to find where the Bible is. And talk about how Josiah and the others might have celebrated finding God's word. Yay for missions! This week we are in the country of Argentina. All right, so you can see our world map, and Argentina is located below the United States of America. So we are here in Georgia, and then we're going to travel a little ways down here to Argentina. So let's check out a couple of fun facts about this great country. That you can find that you can see where the equator is located, and Argentina is below that in South America. So it's surrounded by water, which is pretty cool on both sides. But you have the, the South Pacific Ocean, and then you have the South Atlantic Ocean on the other side of it. All right, so let's learn a little bit more. So there are over 43 million people living in Argentina. Look at that picture. Isn't the artwork beautiful that the city is so colorful that they paint the outside of their apartments and their buildings bright and cheery colors. Now, they speak several different languages in Argentina. They're Spanish, Italian, English, German, French, and others. Literacy, 98% of the population there, those 43 million people, claim that they can read and write, which is awesome because that means the more Bibles that we can get into their hands, that the more they'll be able to read about God's word. Now, religion. Most of them claim to be Christians. On a recent, recent survey that was done, 92% associated themselves with being Roman Catholics. And if you want to learn more about Catholicism, ask your parents and y'all do a little research this week. But right now we're going to dive into our video to see what the missionaries are doing. My name is Celia, and this is my family. We are missionaries in Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is a huge city. There are about 13 million people who live here. It's a very, very big place. I love spending time with my family. We play games, watch movies, and go to the park. Me and my brother Lucas like to do normal kid stuff too like go to birthday parties and play with friends. Hola, mi nombre es Lucas. ¿Cómo estás? Yo vivo en Argentina con mi familia. I'm learning how to play the guitar. The word in Spanish for guitar is guitarra. This is a bakery where they sell sweet Argentinian things. Argentine candy, the best thing in Argentina. But 
But my favorite thing in, in all of Argentina is a food called alfajores. They are so good. They taste like a moon pie, but better. The whole reason we are in Argentina is to tell people about Jesus. Please pray for me and my family. Adios! Let's remember to pray for our missionaries in Argentina, but one cool thing from the video that we liked was going into the bakery and she mentioned that her favorite treat in Argentina is alfajores. So we're actually gonna learn how to make them in our own kitchens this week. Okay, so here's the recipe. I know it looks really long, but it's actually pretty easy to do. But you can see from the picture, they kind of look like make your own Oreos. Um, so that would be really yummy and good to do. We're not gonna take time to walk you through it step by step, but go back, pause the video and see if you can convince mom and dad to let you help them in the kitchen and y'all bake them. And remember, we wanna see pictures or videos and post it below. I'm gonna try to make some this week too. All right, so let's move on to our next activity. Is going to be making yarn dolls, which is something that the children in Argentina create a lot and enjoy. So we thought it'd be a neat activity to help us make some prayer yarn dolls. So everything you need to make our prayer yarn dolls should be lying around your house, hopefully. So the basic supplies are you'll need giant popsicle sticks. They're also known as craft sticks. You'll need some scraps of yarn, some small buttons, some permanent markers, um, a glue gun. And then what you're going to do is you're going to snip a long length of yarn from the ball. Then you're going to start close to the bottom of the craft stick, and you're going to actually just take time winding it up all the way up your stick to create like the doll's outfit or dress, okay? And then you're gonna wrap it a few times and then you can put some hot glue on it to make it stay in place. Then stop about an inch from the top so you can create your doll's face, okay? Then cut some more yarn and you can make the hair with it and wrap it around the top of the popsicle stick. And then once you are done, you can use the markers to make the face and you can even Add buttons if you want to, or sequins, or glitter, or whatever you want to do. And they kind of look like silly dolls, but we thought they'd be really cool because the children in Argentina make these a lot and they play with them. And it would be a great reminder to pray for our missionaries in Argentina whenever you see your yarn doll. Okay, so it's time for Praise Cruise time. This week we're going to introduce a new song, which is hopefully going to be one of your VBS songs, and it's from Rocky Railway.
There's a spirit I cannot contain. There's a spirit I cannot contain. So our verse for the week is Mark 9, 23, which is everything is possible for him who believes. We thought this verse was appropriate for this week since we studied about King Josiah, who became king at eight years old. So just remember this week as you think over this verse and um, practice it, that everything is possible when you know Jesus. We hope you enjoyed our time together this week. We will see you next week for our last regular Team Kid meeting virtually, and then we'll be having awards night coming up on May 13th. All right, so we love you guys. Have a great week. Continue working hard on your schoolwork, helping around the house, um, and 
learning just to live a little differently and spend time in God's word this week, okay? So we challenge you to do that so you can learn more and more about what a great God that we serve. All right, we love y'all. Bye. Bye.